Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lola and today I am doing my April wrap up. I am a little late in recording this and posting this because, well, school has been taking up a lot of my time and also there was one book that I finished technically on May 1st, but I'm gonna consider it. Um, so I haven't done a wrap up in a long time, but I'm just gonna go from like lowest rating to highest rating and really the month of april was really good i had all books i enjoyed so the lowest rated book is a 3.75 and that book is plain bad heroines by emily m danforth this book is basically like a mystery and it has two timelines that you read about so you have one that's set in the past and it's at like a boarding school with um girls that die and they're all connected in some like this book is found at all of their um death scenes like where they died uh and there's like just creepy shit happening on that end of the story and then the other side the other timeline is the present time where you're following um an actress who it's kind of hard to say what the whole plot is but basically present day is actors who are going to um remake what happened at this school in the past into movie form and you kind of just are with all the actors and seeing the way they're interacting and kind of what they're trying to do with this movie. Uh, there's a lot of drama on the Hollywood side. It's like Hollywood drama. Um, there is a lot of LGBTQ rep in this book as well. Like the main character from present time is bi and the other actress she's working with is lesbian. And the author of the book that they are adapting that took inspiration from what happened in the past time at the boarding school, she's also lesbian. So there's a lot of rep on that side. Um, and honestly, this book, I know it might sound complicated the way that I just explained all that, but the writing in this book was what really kind of kept me going. And it's chunky. It's like a good 600 something pages. The reason why I only gave it like 3.75 stars is because as I was going through reading I thought that what was happening was one thing but when you get to the end of the book almost everything that you thought you knew everything you read here is like completely changed in the ending so for some people, they might really enjoy that. I didn't hate it. I just also kind of felt like I was misled for most of the book. So I was like, oh, all right. Um, and also the other part is that none of the characters I really cared about. I wasn't very attached to any of them. I don't think they were poorly written. I actually think they were very well written. I just didn't connect with any of them. I didn't like any of them. I mostly found them whiny or just very dramatic, which again, the Hollywood drama thing. Also, it's quite creepy. There are some scenes that I felt my skin crawling. I was like, Ugh, that's nope. Like wasps, a lot of wasps. Yeah, I mean, there's a wasp right here. And there are illustrations in the book as well, if I can find one. Okay, this is like a super creepy illustration <laughs> that I fell on, but illustrations kind of like that um happen the next book i read was a 4.75 star notice that i did a lot of 75s because they were so close to being like really good but just slight things that i was like nope not quite um so this book was a king's radiance by lr Scholes. uh this is a self-pub book and I discovered it because I follow um, Luke Scholes on Instagram. I'll put him down below. He's the author of this book and I followed him while he was writing this book. And then once he was ready to hand out e-arcs, um, I was happy to be on that list. You're following three siblings. It's a fantasy. It's a high fantasy. You're in another world. There's magic. There is a king, the radiant king, who rules above other kings. and. The Radiant King is basically considered a god, 
and he has, I guess you could say, like other nobles in his court that are called eagles, and they are also considered gods, and you just do not cross them. So the three siblings that you follow are Reyes, uh, Isha, and Dazen. And so Reyes is the youngest son, Isha is the middle girl, and then Dazen is the eldest brother. Isha is taken by one of these eagles when she's extremely young, and she's taken because she has violet eyes, and I guess that makes her, like, a, I forgot, a mystic. And Ray's, Ray's, I don't know how to say his name, I'm sorry, um, but Ray's witnessed her being taken firsthand, and that kind of traumatized him, so he ended up kind of leaving uh, his princely hood, I guess, and becoming more of a rebel. Isha is now, you know, basically a slave, and Dazen has been left to stay with his father and uphold his princely duties as the sole heir to their throne. But the way the story kind of moves along is that there's a push against power and also this uh, defiance of these gods where they're like, you're not a god. You say that you have these magical abilities that are so unique, but other people have it too. So the magic in this book is based on light and sunlight. And a long time ago, these gods were the only ones who could use it. But as time has gone by, you know, they've reproduced with other people and other people can do it too. Honestly, the story, I loved it so much. The only reason it didn't get a full five stars is because it is so jam packed with action. Like it is constantly, constantly some kind of like fight or brawl or argument, something. And I felt overwhelmed uh, by the end of the book where it felt like there was so much action happening that the end action didn't have as much value. I guess we'll go into the five stars now, um, which were all really great reads, but I will kind of go from, you know, the least favorite five stars to the most favorite. So The Vanishing Half is a book that I read for my library book club this month. It is a literary fiction. It's not typically what I tend to read, um, but it was very, very good. You're following two sisters who uh, are struggling with their racial identity and just life in general and they each kind of go separate ways. One um, kind of goes back home to her where they grew up in their southern town and she is raising her very black daughter who deals with a lot of racism and then the other sister she ended up um, pretending to be white. She married white and she lives as a white woman and kind of deals with her own shit too kind of becomes a racist in a way. Like it, honestly, this book just had so many aspects of life, love, relationships, how to deal with all that. It had a lot of conversation points that you can have on the topic of racism and sexism. It also did have a character that was trans and another that was a drag queen, a gay drag queen, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I don't know, honestly, I enjoyed so much listening to the audiobook. I will say, if you want to read this book, I'm sure physically it's great too, but I mainly listened to it and I thought it was phenomenal. The narrator did such a good job. Then I also read um, Rogue Protocol, which is the third installment in the Murderbot Diaries. This one, listen, I've loved all the Murderbot ones, but this one kind of had a slow start for me. I, I feel like I can't talk too much about Murderbot because now it's the third book and they're novellas, they're really short. But I guess I'll say that like it started off where Murderbot meets up with more humans and I didn't feel very invested in the like connections that they were making or even the mission that they were going on. Um, but as the book kept going, when shit just starts hitting the fan, then I was like, yep, yep, I'm enjoying Murderbot all over again, just as much as I did in the first and second books. Also, I, I cried in this book. Yeah, this third book reminded me that Murderbot can be sarcastic and kind of silly, you know, kind of lighthearted and reflective, but it can also be absolutely devastating. So I learned, I learned to just be like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I remember what you do now. I also have been getting back into reading manga or manga. 
however you want to say it. I approve of both ways. Uh, so I picked up Chainsaw Man. I read the first volume and the second volume, and I read these because, so Ryan, my husband, he loves watching anime, and he's been talking about how other people have been hyping up uh, Chainsaw Man, which is going to be a show very soon, I think in like 2023. Um, so I was like, you know what, I haven't read manga in a long time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it, see what it is. And the first volume, holy fuck, <laughs> it is brutal and it is gory and it's so ridiculous, but at the same time, pretty deep in some of the stuff that it was like talking about. Um, if you want to know the basics, it's a world where there are demons and um, there are demon hunters and there's this one kid who he kind of has like this demon dog with him. It's like a dog with a chainsaw on its, he on its head and he's been friends with it. Um, but he's also in a pretty bad situation where he's been doing odd jobs to try and make up for, I guess, a debt that's been left on him by his parents or his dad. Uh, he's even like sold a liver, sold an eye, like he's fucking, everything's missing from him because he's trying to pay the debt. And shit happens and he ends up merging with the demon dog and becoming a chainsaw man. Like it's, it's on the picture. You can't miss it. And the second volume, trippier stuff happens. So I did like the first volume more than the second one, just because the first one kind of just immediately gets you into the action. The second one is building the world a little bit more, which I did enjoy, but it also kind of had a very confusing plot thing that's going on. And I'm sure that volume three is going to continue on that because I'm genuinely just like, what the fuck is happening? And finally, the last five star book that I read in the month of April that is most definitely a new favorite of mine is The Ninth Reign by Jen Williams. This book was like a mix of high fantasy that we're very used to seeing, but also kind of sci-fi. There's just, there's so many like plot lines to this book that I don't think I can do it justice in enough time. But I will tell you this. There is elf-like people who are dying because they consume blood. There is an old woman who is just, all she wants to do is understand the world and she seems to be babysitting these youths. <laughs> and there is also witches that can use green fire by sucking life out of things. It's fucking epic. And they kind of go on an adventure together and slowly start understanding things that have been lost through time because again the only people who really know the history are dying i absolutely fucking love this book the way it ended i cannot wait to continue the rest of the series i actually requested that my library purchase this book for me and i've requested for them to get the rest of them because i'm like listen i have to do a justice to my library to have this book and you know what's also crazy when I looked up the catalog, my libraries are all interconnected, so if you can't find a book at your local library, you can go into the catalog and get the book from any other of the libraries, they'll send it. And my local library didn't have it, I went into the catalog, none of the libraries in Connecticut have the book. So I was like, I will do society a favor and bring it in. <laughs> so yes, I have requested for the rest of them and I cannot wait to read the rest. So whenever that one comes in, I am reading it. So that's it for what I read in April. It was really a really good month. It was hard also because I had so many good books and yet I was right in the middle of doing schoolwork and being so stressed about everything. Um, and I was also very sick at the beginning of April. But man, does it feel good to have that many good books in one month. So yep, that's it for me. Uh, if you like this video, you know, like, subscribe, comment, the usual, and I will see you next time.